Hi, good afternoon. And this is day three of 14 KPH or Carlos Power Hour. So today we will talk about a very important thing among everyone who seems to be busier than they should be or who feels like they're busier than they should be. I know we're not really as busy as we should be because a lot of us procrastinate. I mean, thanks Facebook and Instagram for well, you know, wasting our time most of the time. But really, um, a lot of people uh, ask me when I meet them for the first time, hey, Carla, you seem to be doing a lot of things. I see you do a lot of things in social media, and then you, you write, you do these talks, and you run multiple businesses. So they ask me, how do you become more productive? And most of all, how do you stay productive? So. I've, I've literally heard this question a lot of times, especially from strangers, and that's why I want to tackle it now. So let me tell you one thing. Productivity deals a lot with mindset, and you have to understand, and you have to fully know that you always have the choice to be productive, which leads to our principle number one. Things only happen when you allow it, okay? So it's the same thing with your diet or straying from your diet. It's the same thing with cheating on your partner. It's the same thing with procrastination. So things only happen to you if you allow it. So if you have a to-do list, if you have things that you have to do for that day, and then you stray from it, remember that it, will, it only happens because you allow it to. If you don't allow it to, if you don't accept it in you, that you have to that you have to do that you know you have to oh my gosh i just need to check my twitter i just need to check the my instagram one last time i just i need a 30 minute nap or maybe one episode of suits maybe it won't hurt so okay we always remember that things only happen when you allow it and if you uh, if you don't allow it to happen then it won't happen so if you don't allow yourself to be unproductive then of course you will be productive another important mindset shift that you have to do with regard to dealing with productivity is that one of the biggest reasons why a lot of entrepreneurs are not productive enough or procrastinate a lot is that most of them have not fully accepted or owned up to the duty of their success okay so if you know that you have to be at a specific place financially a specific place physically at a specific time in the future you know your goals your objectives maybe you have a vision board if you don't fully own up to what you have to do your duty to get to your desired destination that's when you procrastinate at the back of your head you have not accepted it because you will not do the work to get there so meaning if you procrastinate then you should be alarmed because it means that the back of your head, you're also actively allowing, you know, actively allowing yourself to stray, and you're also actively have, you know, repelled owning up to the duty of your success. So those are the things that you have to remember. So the thing about um, our how how human beings are is that our brains default state is to daydream we do not want to do things that are difficult we do not want to do things that are tedious and the good news is you don't have to there are a lot of ways to amp up your productivity and to choose only the things that you want to do and you can still and this will help you scale faster and be faster and most of all feel so much better about yourself and become a better uh, more well-rounded person in general so this first principle that I'll share to you is something that uh, I've learned from from Tim Ferriss for our work week plus some TED talk of some guy sorry I forgot I will research him later so in in the four hour work week Tim Ferriss uh, taught us to eliminate automate delegate so if you have not read that book he says that first you have to eliminate the things that you don't really need in your life so most likely there are a lot of things in your life right now that you don't really need you don't really need to do people that you don't really need to see um, people who have hurt you in the past that you kind of try to still talk to right now but it doesn't feel good anymore so you know don't be afraid to eliminate these things in your life because it will be healthier and better for you so um, you, this can be big things such as you know those uh, relationships 
these can be particular assets if you have a car or a house you know if it's not for in investment maybe you can let go of it if it just gives you more problems or it can be little day-to-day -day things just like um, your your wardrobe or your regimen so uh, a personal example that I can give of this is that I have planned how I prepare every day in the morning that I can get ready in literally 10 minutes so what I did is that I eliminated a lot of things first I most of my clothing do not um, require ironing so after they're washed and after they're dried you know they're ready to wear so I've eliminated ironing from the things that I have to do most of the time um, next is I've also I also only buy clothes that do not have buttons do not have zippers you know except for particular uh, jeans but most of them don't have buttons zippers velcros you know i just have to wear them and that's it so no ironing no buttons no zippers no no um like extra stuff so it helps me um prepare faster in the morning and another thing that i've eliminated from my regimen is combing so it, I think it has been six years uh, and I almost never comb my hair. I only comb my hair if, I'm, if I have a formal event to go to and I need to style it. But if I don't have to, if it's just every day, then I've completely eliminated that from, from my regimen. And I think um, it turned out well. My hair feels pretty great and looks pretty great. It's just a little bit windy here. So. The next step is to automate. So there are a lot of things in your life that you can automate and just, you know, can just do an autopilot. For example, your credit card payments or your other bill payments. Uh, you can schedule particular things at a particular time. If you have outsourced your cleaning or your laundry to other people, you can automate for these people or you can just schedule that they will come at a particular time of the day and then you can schedule your payments with that as well. Um, a lot of things in your business can also be automated just like um, uh, the switching of on and off of your electricity, the salary, the transfer from your bank account, uh, from the business bank account to your employees for their salaries, you know, that can be automated too. So um, look, at, look at the things that you can automate in your life and then automate everything right away, right now. The next step is to delegate, meaning for the things that you cannot eliminate and the things that you cannot automate, then you have to delegate it, you have to give it to other people. The, the idea behind this is that whatever you're best at, it should be the only thing that you should be doing in your business. So me, I'm best at marketing, sales, PR, client acquisition. So I'm, I tell you that's the only thing, that's the only thing that I'm doing for all the companies that I run and handle. All the other things, other people handle it for me. Um, and also they're better at me, uh, they're better than me at it. So I have vice presidents who are very good at handling operations and, and they handle my operations. I have personnel who are uh, best at, uh, for example, doing deliveries, our messengers. So they, they know the city's routes, they know the, about the, the traffic at this particular time, you know? Uh, they're very updated with these things. So. Um, aside from that, I have also been able to delegate a lot of things in my personal life like cooking, cleaning, so I, I hire professional cleaners to clean uh, on schedule and um, I don't, almost don't cook anymore because I've subscribed to uh, calorie counted delivery meals, um, curated meals. So I get to eat healthy, varied food every day and they get delivered at my house. So that saves me a lot of trouble and other chores too, of course, like car wash or um, um, uh, bank, uh, bank work. You know, I, I, I don't even remember when the last time was that I, I was in a bank. So, you know, you can delegate a lot of things to different people. You can hire a virtual assistant. You can hire an actual assistant. You can, you can uh, ask your sibling or a cousin if they want a short gig and they can do small things for you, you know. So you can delegate these things to, to other people because you should be doing, once again, you should only be doing the thing that you're best at for your business. And now, when you've gone through that uh, productivity funnel, as I call it, you've eliminated, automated, and delegated. The next thing that you need to do, because these are the only things that are left in your list, in your to-do list, is to concentrate. Okay, eliminate, automate, delegate, concentrate. So the, for these things, you have to commit 100% that 
you have to do it and you have to do it right away you have to be on schedule you have goals and objectives that need to be met remember things only happen when you allow it and number two you have to own up to the duty of your success so uh, a common uh, a common problem with um, trying to concentrate our distractions and procrastination so now that you already know that you have to concentrate then you can take out the things disallow the things that are distracting you and that are you know getting in the way of your concentration so that includes social media um, noise or um, maybe your children running around your partner you know it's, it's not always a bad thing it's just that you want to focus on your business more another model or another funnel that I follow is that on your to-do list most people um, most people divide or classify their tasks into urgency and importance urgency meaning how soon do I need to do it how soon should it be done importance is how important it is uh, how important is it that it gets done so when people uh, you know our brains work faster than than our hands and in our heads when we look at our to-do lists and there, there are like 30 things there we already think which one is the most urgent and is the most important but you have to remember another extra thing that is also very crucial when trying to consider what to do first on your to-do list and when trying to become and stay more productive and that is significance meaning for you on your to-do list and on the things that you have to do you have to ask which one reaps the most benefits for me and my business which one is the thing that I can do that will make all the other tasks easier then that's the thing that you should do first you can ask you can also ask yourself which one uh, which one proposal uh, can you send that will assure you of a client's business for two three five more years so of course you have to do that first instead of doing this small thing for uh, even if it's urgent and it's important but it's not that significant so if you're if you're trying to rank the things that you have to do and you're trying to be productive the most important thing is always what's urgent what's important and what's most significant okay so now that I've told you the two funnels that I work with the common uh, resistance that I get is but it's not fun yeah of course being productive works not fun I mean for me it's fun if you love what you're doing yeah it's fun but you also have to admit that it's work and you have to put in energy you have to put in some some mental prowess in there you know and you're gonna be tired you're gonna be tired after that that's why we need to sleep eight hours a day and you need to eat well and move well okay so a thing that I have learned lately is that you can reward yourself slowly all throughout the day so I know the end reward will be you getting your goals and you uh, um, achieving your objectives your your financial uh, are reaching your financial targets and you know things like that but the these rewards because they appear to be too far the tendency is for us to procrastinate or to not care and that's why a lot of people don't care about global warming because they feel like they feel like whatever they do is not going to be that significant or that the is the results or the outcome are too far you know maybe I'll die before I get to experience the real wrath of global warming that's why it's very difficult to get people to care but I learned this concept reward substitution from Dan Ariely which is one of the uh, one of the best behavioral economists in the world it's probably the uh, the only the only rogue economist or um, behavioral economist that I truly truly follow he said that reward substitution is is you giving yourself uh, little rewards all throughout the day for every task that's being achieved so meaning these re small rewards that you can get every day are substitute to the final and big rewards so that you can have something that you can hold on to right now because that's important to us that's important for us humans so what I do is that for uh, you you determine what it is that you consider is a reward so you know it can be ice cream cupcake uh, an episode of your favorite series and you can impose a reward for yourself for every productive day or every set of things that are done in your to-do list so 
you can f for me personally um, I have uh, I love santol it's our uh, tropical fruit and it's in season now and it's so sweet and juicy and I really love eating it every day in fact I'm salivating right now just <laughs> thinking about it so I buy I buy that fruit and then I, I reward myself with that food every time I, I finish a good day or every time I finish like 10 things in my to-do list so you know my to-do list is really really crazy it's like 30 things in a day but when I go on turbo mode and I'm like absolutely productive I tell you I can finish all of those things in two hours and that's not just because I type fast but because I think with regards to urgency importance like significance and even if I don't finish everything in my to-do list then I still feel good because I was able to do the things which are most significant okay so okay and la last tip is about uh, fighting procrastination through social media so we have all been guilty of this even me personally um, that's why we need to fight it and we, we need to actively uh, do it and we need to be aware when it's happening to us so for me uh, understanding social media addiction is is easy you have to you have to know that social media is designed to have a dopamine loop okay so the dopamine is a neurotransmitter our hormones that uh, that makes you feel good that gives you a, a reward feeling you know a feeling of reward so this is the this hormone is induced in our brain every time we feel like we're being rewarded so social media is patterned after actually it's it's patterned closely to to um, slot machines the way the the pitch of the notification if you noticed it's it's um, it feels like it's a reward or you've won something every time you get a notification and and it's even called a notification because it sounds so official and important that you have to just look at it so always remember that what what a notification gives you is a is a it's just a shot a quick shot of dopamine which I read uh, somewhere that is only good for 37 seconds so that's why social media is designed to be addictive because it gives you a, a dopamine loop it, it keeps you it keeps you wanting to get those notifications over and over again because if you get one notification you get 30 seconds 37 seconds of dopamine and then and then when it's gone you look for the next one and then when it's there and then it's there and then another one and then it's just a loop and then you get sucked into social media for like hours so that has happened to me too like not proud of this but I think last year I literally was scrolling through my phone from 6 p.m. to 12 midnight and just reading random articles watching things on YouTube and 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 I'm oh my god I felt so bad about it I just like I was just on Facebook until I fell asleep and you know that's that's not a good thing so what you need to do is to kill that loop and eradicate that from when you're doing work okay so just turn off your phone uh, close the windows on Facebook and just do your work so whatever work that you can do without social media do it and do everything in one go and you'll be surprised how much more you can finish so if your work is on social media meaning you're a social media manager or a social media marketer maybe you can turn off your personal notifications and then you can just work on the content first or you can transfer the content and work on maybe Microsoft Word or or you know on your, on your Google documents or something and then you can just move the content after sometimes that's what I do okay so once again um, I would like to recap on the most important thing that we have discussed today and that is the right mindset to remember when we're talking about productivity number one don't remember that things only happen when you allow it so if you don't allow it it will not happen and you are built your life is built on the things that you allow okay so do not forget that number two is that productivity or the issue of procrastination is just you not fully owning up to the duty of your success you know exactly where you want to be a year three years five years from now it's so clear in your head and unless you own to the things that you need to do to get there then you'll never be productive 